Good morning, children. Children, we were discussing about reflection of light. We were discussing about reflection of light. The change of path of light after falling on some object is called reflection of light. Once again I am repeating. The change of path of light after falling on some object is called reflection of light. It is found that reflection of light from a surface always takes place in a well defined manner and it takes place in accordance with two simple rules or you can say laws of reflection but before proceeding children towards the laws of reflection we will first know some important terms okay we will know what are the related terms which we have to know in order to know the laws of reflection. So, first of all, incident ray, incident ray. What is an incident ray? The ray of light coming towards the mirror is called incident ray. The ray of light coming towards the mirror is called reflection sorry it is called incident ray now the second is reflected ray reflected ray what is reflected Ray. The ray of light which turns back after reflection from the mirror surface is called the reflected ray. Once again I am repeating. The ray of light which turns back after reflection from the mirror surface is called reflected ray. Then the point of incidence. It is that point on the surface of the mirror where the incident ray falls. So, First of all, we will know with the help of diagram. This is a plane mirror. a plane mirror and this is the incident ray. Then after reflection this is the Reflected ray. This point is the point of incidence. This is the plane mirror. Then, 
this is the normal this angle it is known as angle of incidence and this is the angle of reflection so now let me explain all the terms one by one incident ray see here the ray of light coming towards the mirror is called incident ray then the reflected ray the ray of light which turns back after reflection the ray of light after getting reflected from the mirror turns back it is known as reflected ray then the point of incidence this one is the point of incidence it is the point on on the surface of the mirror where the incident ray falls it is the point on the mirror on which the incident ray falls now normal this one is the normal it is a line perpendicular to the surface of the point of incidence and it is known as the normal at the point of incidence now angle of reflection see children the angle see here this is angle is known as angle of incidence now this is the angle which is made by the incident ray and the normal that is the angle formed between the incident ray and the normal is known as angle of incidence now angle of reflection in the same way we can define that angle of reflection is the angle between the normal and the reflected ray is known as angle of reflection then the planes what are the plane of incidence and the plane of reflection so one by one we will know what is plane of incidence and plane of reflection plane of incidence children as we supposed to define a line with the help of two point so in the same way the plane can be defined with the help of two lines we can define the plane so the plane defined by the incident ray and the normal at the point of incidence is called the plane of incidence in the same way we can define the plane of reflection also that the plane defined by the reflected ray and the normal at the point of incidence is called the plane of reflection and one more thing children angle of incidence is denoted by small i it is denoted by small i and angle of reflection is denoted by small r so these are the terms which we have to know in order to know the laws of reflection so now we will proceed towards the laws of reflection laws of reflection first of all children you know that in to understand the relationship between the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection we have to perform an activity we have to know what is the relationship between the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection so the things required are first of all 
we have to perform an activity to know the relationship between the angle of incidence and angle of reflection the things required are plane mirror two cylindrical tubes tubes are simply made up of cardboard then the third thing we need is a torch and fourth one is a drawing board these are the things we required to know the relationship between angle of incidence and angle of reflection what are the relationship between these two so first of all we will know the relationship with the help of a diagram so let me draw the diagram first this is simply a drawing board this is a drawing board and this is a plane mirror This is the cylindrical tube made up of cardboard, cardboard, and this is the second cylindrical tube. It is also made up of cardboard. No. This is the normal, and from here. This is a torch. this is the diagram now first let me explain the diagram you have to place a plane mirror vertically upward in upright position you have to place the plane mirror vertically upright on the white board this one is the white board this is the white board and you have to plane the sorry place the plane mirror in an upright position then you have to hold one cylindrical tube in an inclined position see here it is placed in an inclined position near to the mirror after that we have to direct light from the torch to the tube we have to light the torch and place in such a way so that the uh, lighted torch passes its light through the tube after that we have to place another tube in the same matching angle see another tube is placed in the same matching angle but only in the opposite side this one is at this side of the mirror and the another mirror is placed sorry another tube is placed just opposite to the first tube after that we have to adjust the second tube in such a way that the reflected ray get collected from the second tube and children you will able to collect the reflected ray 
provided the second tube is inclined to the same angle if the second tube is inclined to the same angle then only this reflected ray can be collected after getting reflected from the plane mirror it is it passes through the second tube and this one only is the reflected ray which can be collected by keeping or adjusting the second cylindrical tube in the same way as this is inclined to the mirror in the same way this is also so children the light which is reflected from the mirror moves down to the second tube when the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection so on the basis of all these observations there are two laws of reflection so on this on such type of observations there are two laws of reflection first law of reflection is that the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane and the second law of reflection implies that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection so children the laws of reflections are the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane and the second law implies that the angle of incidence is this one is the angle of incidence which is formed by incident ray and the normal this is the incident angle of incidence and this one is the angle of reflection which is formed by the reflected ray and the normal so the second law implies that angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection that means if we denote the angle of incidence with small i and if we denote angle of reflection with small r then angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection this is the second law of reflection okay children